Hello everyone, welcome to Bronte Mania and a further look on Anne Bronte. Today I would like to take a slightly different take on her life, uh, but to begin with I'd like to show you some sketches I've made of Anne. This is the first one. And then there's this one. And the third one is actually a sketch that is thought to have been done by Anne. This is my copy of it. It's a, a child. One of the really excellent books I got my collection about the Brontes is a selected um, poems that actually includes Charlotte, Emily, Anne, and also Branwell. You should never forget Branwell because he, I think he wrote some really lovely poetry. Um, it's a really excellent volume which is edited by Juliet Barker who wrote the excellent biography on the family uh, which I have, which I consider my Bible on the Brontes. Um, but this is a really excellent book. It actually, at the beginning of the book, it has a chronology of the Brontes' lives, which is really very interesting. I'd like to give you a look, give you a look at that. I find this very interesting because it's got actually, a, as you probably noticed from what I showed you there, a potted history of important events in the Brontes' lives, and next to it is the year these took place and also the age that, of the main participants. For an example, I've got one here, uh, May 1840, Anne was appointed governess to the Robinson family at Thorpe Green Hall near York, and she was 20 years old when she took up that position. And then further down we have, in 1843, at the age of 26, 27th of January, Charlotte returns alone to Branwell, to Brussels, sorry, to combine her studies with teaching duties at the pension at Hager. Um... Within this collection of poetry, there is actually a very interesting poem by Anne I'd like to read out to you. Uh, it's entitled A Reminisce, and uh, it supposedly relates to her feelings about the curate, William Waitman, um, who served as a curate under Anne's father, Patrick, for a number of years, and who was a loyal servant to him. And this is how the poem goes. Yes, thou art gone, and never more thy sunny smile shall gladden me. But I may pass the old church door and pace the floor that covers thee, may stand upon the cold damp stone and think that frozen lies below the lightest heart that I have known, the kindest I shall ever know. Yet though I cannot see thee more, tis still a comfort to have seen and though thy transient life is o'er, tis sweet to think that thou hast been, to think a soul so near divine within a form so angel fair, united to a heart like thine, has gladdened once a humble sphere. And that's a really lovely sentimental poem about William Waitman, who I believe Anne was very close to, but I do not believe, as some people think, that she actually was in love with him. I do not think that's the case. I think she was looked to me as a close and trusted friend and was very sad when he when he died so tragically at a very young age in 1842. Um, I'd like to actually connect this with a theory I have about uh, William Waitman in the sense of how he's drawn into Anne's uh, first novel, Agnes Grey. 
And the part of the novel I'm thinking of is when uh, Anne's creation, Agnes, uh, who is also a governess uh, and very much, uh, it's very much an autobiographical novel. Uh, in her sec second governess post, she, uh, there is a church minister there called Mr. Hatfield, who is a bit of a egotistical sort fellow. He is uh, quite hardened parishioners who do not are not able to go to church. They're old, they're infirm, but he comes down to order them. Says, "Why have you not come to church?" When he goes round to visit them, he is a very harsh man, and he also flirts with some of the local young women. Um, and then there is uh, Mr. Weston, who is the curate who, Anne, who Agnes falls in love with. He, I actually think Mr. Weston and Mr. Hatfield are actually both two sides of William Wheatman. The Mr. Hatfield side is uh, his flirtatious side. He was never harsh and people. He was a kindly soul, charitable soul, was William Wheatman, but the flirtatious side of flirting with female members of congregation and those in the local community was very much him, although he did it in a very good-natured way. Um, but the Mr. Western part of him was very much what he was like as a person, which was he was charitable, kind. He was always looking out for other people's interest. He was always someone to be trusted. Um, so the only part of Mr. Hartford was within him was the flirtatious side, but definitely not the uh, other side of him, the egotistical, arrogant side, that was definitely never him. I've actually brought that into my novel on Anne, which um, I have written and I'm currently editing. It's entitled A Testament of My Life, which my idea behind that is to when Anne was near the end of her life, she didn't realise it at the time, but when she contracted the disease that killed her, it was the consumption, she uh, had this idea that in the last few months of her life, she thought she might be nearing her end, so she thought she would leave behind a, a testament of her life, by writing her life story, which is what she did in these last few months. Um, and I actually write in the name of Anne, so I'm actually, I am actually Anne Bronte, which sounds a bit weird, but that's the way I've gone about it. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed writing it and getting inside Anne's head and just being a, you know, was an incredible privilege just to just have that feeling of actually being Anne in, in the time I wrote it, so even though it sounds weird, but uh, so I'm currently editing that and hopefully uh, that process will be finished soon I can see about publishing it. But originally I thought it would be just one book, but then I've, no matter how much editing I've done, there's certain scenes I thought I could cut quite drastically, but found I couldn't really, I would lose the whole flow of it if I did. So I was thinking I might end up having to make it into two volumes. So currently it's over 700 pages long, so it's pretty huge, but... But then when I thought about it, I thought, oh yeah, it's so big, but that's because it's about her whole life. It starts from when she looks back at when she was born, growing up, going to school. I was really pleased with the school passages of it, uh, even though it only covered about two or so chapters, but uh, I was quite pleased with that. And then I go through all her experiences, like going through her two governess roles, and then later on, becoming a published author and visits visit to London with Charlotte and there's a lot of key events I put into the novel so I hope you'll enjoy it if you get to read it at some point. Okay, thank you very much for tuning in to Bronte Mania and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you.